Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-host, Leah Matthews. How you doing, Leah? What's going on, Leah? How you doing? Hi, Chief. I'm doing good. How are you? Oh man, I'm doing wonderful, wonderful. You know, I know, I know Julie's off today, or she's on leave this week. So uh, we we got it. We're gonna take, we're gonna have an awesome chief chat. We got this. <laughs> Absolutely. So today I'm reporting live from the beautiful National Harbor in DC, in the DC area, uh, for the Air Force Association annual convention. And so, uh, if it sounds like I'm in a hotel room, it's because I'm in a hotel room. So. Uh, just please forgive me or if the audio is not not that great or whatever the case may be uh and, and my, my wi-fi is, is maybe a little bit sketchy so hopefully it, it lasts through the whole entire interview and i made my bed so just if y'all see my bed it's, it's made <laughs> so but we got an awesome we got an awesome guest uh lined up today he's an uh outstanding airman that is linked to the air force association so um and through the Air Force Wounded Warrior Program as well. So, and he's here to share his story. So without further ado, Leah, please introduce today's guest. Chief, absolutely. Today's guest is an Air Force Wounded Warrior sharing his story of healing through adaptive sports. He actually plays seven sports, both team and individual. He's competed at Warrior Games three times and is the U.S. co-captain for 2022's Invictus Games. Please give a warm Chief Chat welcome to retired Tech Sergeant Joshua Smith. Hey. Well, well jo Josh, welcome to Chief Chat. Hey, thanks, Chief. It's great to be with you. Yeah, for those that don't know that we, we had an episode uh, a few a few episodes ago that uh, we had Josh on with the actual Air Force Association and some Wounded Warrior Program uh, leads, uh, but, but we had some technical difficulties with Josh and we, we had to make it right and we brought him back and now he's got his own spot, his own show uh, <laughs> on Chief Chat. So, so man, we, we appreciate you for being flexible with us and, and coming back on the show to share your story. Well, I appreciate you bringing me back and having this opportunity. It's always uh, humbling and honoring for me to to share my story and to talk about the AFW2 program and to help educate and advocate for our wounded warriors and disabled veterans and their families. Awesome. So can you tell our uh, audience where you're joining us from today? So I'm joining you from uh, Spanish Fork, Utah. I'm about 45 miles south of Salt Lake City. Awesome. Excellent. And then, so Josh, uh, you enlisted in the Air Force in 2003 and served for 13 years. So can you share with us what led you to a life of service? Um, well, I would say my uh, a life of service started uh, with my growing up, my background. I grew up in Montana. I was a country boy, grew up on a farm uh, around both sets of my grandparents, my parents. Uh, instilled in me at a young age, myself and my siblings. I have one brother and four sisters. Uh, you know, the importance of service and hard work and and morals and values and and strong character. So I would say at a young age, growing up as a farm boy, learning how to work hard and to serve others was something that has always been instilled with instilled in me uh, from a young age because of my parents and being around my grandparents as well. And then. Um, Kind of in the back of my mind as I as I grew up and got a little older, I you know, in high school, I met with recruiters uh, from basically every other uh, branch of service except the Air Force and kind of putting on a uniform and serving our country was something that in the back of my mind was something I wanted to do, but uh, eventually did it later on in life. Absolutely. Um, and, and it's funny you say that because uh, I, I was a a former Marine and um, my recruiter got me like probably two days after I started my um, 
my, my senior year in high school. And so never heard from an Air Force recruiter ever, right? They, they don't even have to because people come to them. All the other services yeah. have to kind of go and find people. And, and normally the Air Force got people kind of banging on their door to get in. So, Right. So uh, during your time serving the nation, you were wounded um, and you were very candid about your injuries and what happened to you back in June of 2008. Uh, do you mind sharing the story with our viewers? Oh, no problem, Chief. So uh, back in June 2008, I was uh, I went to combat survival training at Fairchild Air Force Base in Washington. Uh, so my my career field, my AFSC, I was an air crew life support guy, which later we merged with uh, another career field and became air crew flight equipment. So for those that may not know, we're the guys that inspect and maintain all the air crews equipment, uh, repack parachutes, inspect helmets, oxygen equipment, take care of all the survival equipment that's uh, for our air crew and uploaded and downloaded off of aircraft. So I uh, was going through the process of becoming a certified training instructor. I wanted to, to be in the schoolhouse teaching all of our new air crew how to use their equipment. And part of that process, part of the check in the box to become a certified instructor was actually going to combat survival school training. And as I was there through that demanding rigorous training, uh, the last week of training is um, a uh, POW camp, resistance camp. And I was kind of beat up a little bit and tortured there, uh, shoved down in a small covert, which eventually led to uh, some nagging injuries uh, over time. So I, I suffered uh, some back issues, a right hip issue, uh, some shoulder and neck issues. Uh, I didn't talk about it at the end because I was in my last week of training. I wanted to graduate and go home. And so once I got home, I, you know, I went to the, to the base clinic and met with my PCM. And uh, unfortunately, I spent six years fighting military care uh, to get taken care of with, with a hip issue and a back issue and shoulder and neck issues that I had. And over time, eventually fighting for six years to get treated properly, uh, in 2015, I had to go through two full bilateral hip replacements. Um, I had a shoulder surgery, an elbow surgery, and I suffer from a thoracolumbar spine disease. Disease. I have four discs in my back that will eventually need to be fused together and have surgery as well. So uh, the Combat Survival School, to say the least, did a number on my body physically and, and trying to get the proper care after coming home and not being treated led to full bilateral hip replacements and other issues. Man, that, yeah, wow. that, that, that's, that's a lot. Thanks for sharing that story with us. Um, so continuing on with that, after the injuries, you continued to serve uh, for eight more years, including a year long unaccompanied assignment to South Korea. Um, so what was that time like for you? So those remaining eight years, you know, I, I uh, just kind of gradually over time, the injuries that, that I had from that combat survival school training uh, just became worse and worse. I did my year in Korea from 2012 to 2013. And, you know, being stuck at Kunsan Air Base on the southern peninsula of South Korea um, in a real training world environment, uh, wearing that mop gear, going through all those real world exercises, wearing that 75 pound pack, just really that year did another number on my body physically to my back, my mm -hmm. hips and those issues that I suffered originally back in 08. And so when I got home in 2013, we PCS as a family to South Dakota, spent my last three years on active duty at uh, Ellsworth Air Force Base and uh, going to a new base, a new assignment. I, I went to the clinic, went to a new doctor and I just, I don't know, hoping for the best that I can have a new doctor, somebody that will actually listen to me um, kind of get me some of the help that I needed physically with all these injuries that just eventually kept taking a toll on my body for another eight years, you know, of service. And, uh, 2015, like I said, ended up in full bilateral hip replacements and elbow surgery. And that was, that was a rough year with a lot of physical rehab. Um, and then in 2016, I went through a, a medical evaluation board, the MEB, and I was uh, medically retired after 13 years of active duty service. And, uh, kind of that that's kind of where the remaining eight years took me was just it was it was tough I dealt with it you know not being treated and taken care of I just I kind of sucked it up I I went through my unit I went through life I went through service and just did the best I could and served the best I could and kind of rolled with the punches 
Yeah, no, I've, I've heard many stories from, um, you know, airmen that I've uh, kind of known over the years that kind of have struggled with the with the, with the healthcare system within, and I'm medical by trade in in, in the military in, in the Air Force, and so they've they've had issues, uh, you know, wanting to seek, uh, you know, second opinions and all kind of different things where they felt like they weren't getting the care they 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 needed or deserved, and it's it's just cool, but it's cool to hear, you know, how you kind of went through that that that's the system, but you were able to kind of come out on the other side. Um, uh, you know, taken care of in a sense. Sure. Uh, and I know shortly after you retired, you were introduced to a CARE event through the Air Force Wounded Warrior Program. And uh, CARE represents, the C is a caregiver support, uh, A is adaptive sports and ambassador workshop, the R is for recovering airman mentorship program and resiliency programming, and the E is for empowerment and transition. And so can you kind of tell us a story about uh, I mean, so I'm I'm curious to know: Did you know about the Wounded Warrior Program, and you were you eligible like during your active duty time, or did you find out after you had already retired? Okay, so I actually found out about AFW two program during my MEB process when uh, we just initiated my medical evaluation board. I had a buddy of mine who uh, he was a firefighter, and uh, he had some. Uh, some of his airmen who were in the program and he kind of told me a little bit about it. He didn't know a whole lot about it. He just said, Hey, there's this wounded warrior program that the air force has, you know, those of us, when we get injured, there's this program that they kind of help, help us to heal and to recover and to take care of us and our families. And so at first I was a little hesitant of wanting to join, you know, I was like, well, you know, my injuries, uh, there's, there's guys that have been blown up overseas in Iraq and Afghanistan over in the Middle East, guys that have suffered severe burns, loss of limb. I don't fall in that kind of category when it comes to that type of combat um, injuries. So I don't know if I was a little hesitant at first. And uh, my superintendent, actually, in my career field at the time, I went back, chatted with him about the program. And he's like, hey, Josh, if you don't enroll yourself in the program, I'm going to call him up and I'm going to do it for you. And so, you know, a couple of days later, I, I just called up, I asked questions about the program. We had a actual on base uh, where I was stationed at Ellsworth Air Force Base in South Dakota. We actually had an AFW2 recovery uh, care coordinator. These guys are called RCCs. And we have some RCCs throughout the Air Force. Unfortunately, we don't have one at every base. I really wish we did, but I was fortunate enough to have a recovery care coordinator at my base. And so me and my wife went and met with him and he basically laid out what the AFW2, the Air Force Wounded Warrior Program was. We were enrolled that day in the program. And then just a couple weeks later, um, I went to my first care event. So this was just a few months prior to me uh, starting my terminal leave, uh, you know, and then kind of taking off that uniform. And so, like you said, Chief, uh, a care event, there's, there's so much wrapped into that word care when it comes to what a care event or care camp is, when it comes to our Air Force Wounded Warrior Program, it's not just about adaptive sports. There's so much more to the program. And that's one reason why I like to share my story and, and educate and advocate for the program is to let people know, hey, we, we have a portion of this program that's the caregiver program. So our spouses, significant others, or those who are an actual caregiver for us as wounded warriors, you know, the AFW2 program takes them into these events and kind of gives them a special retreat as a caregiver. That's time that they get to be away away with other caregivers, kind of having a vacation, being just fine wine and dined, if you will, uh, during those seven or eight days by the program and their staff. Um, and then obviously, you, said, you know, the A, we have the adaptive sports, uh, where we learn how to participate in adaptive sports based on our wounds, illnesses, and injuries. Uh, that's a big part of the program. Uh, we have the resiliency and the mentorship portion. So when you're enrolled in the program and you go to a care event, you also learn about the importance of becoming a mentor. So if you're in the program and you've been there a while, when we have new warriors and new young airmen come into the program who've been wounded and injured, our job for those of us that have been here now is to mentor and kind of train and help mold these others who come into the program and to help teach them about the program. Um, and then the, obviously the importance of we adapt, we overcome, we need to learn how to remain resilient through our wounds, illnesses, and injuries. And then uh, they also help you, you know, with that transition piece. You know, some of us are going to fight maybe to stay in service 
and it works out some it doesn't work out and then those of us that just go through an MEB process we end up retiring early separating the Air Force Wounded Warrior Program is there to help us with that transition from military life back into the civilian world so there's so many portions uh, different programs that are included in the Air Force's Wounded Warrior Program and it goes above and beyond the adaptive sports yeah and no and, and I'm I'm glad that you kind of shared your story because I'm sure there's there's uh, military members out there, specifically airmen and guardians, that, uh, that that may not even realize that they're eligible for a wounded warrior kind of program. And the fact that, you know, we, we do some really intense training and, and people get injured in that training. and But you don't even kind of think of yourself as a wounded warrior because you're, you're thinking, like you said, downrange, uh, those type of things. Uh, so it's, it's awesome to kind of hear your story and, and to share with other folks to say, you know what, uh, you may be eligible for this type of care because, you this thing is going to probably follow you for the rest of your life, you know, whatever yeah. happened or whatever injury that that it had. And you, you just need a support system. You need, you know, uh, of course, the medical care. But just, that support system is probably uh, just as important as the medical care. Most definitely, Chief, you're exactly right. That support system's huge. You know, that support system. Um, Unfortunately, you know, we see some breakdown, right, with that support system. You know, not all of your family, extended family or close friends and loved ones really understand the military lifestyle because they're not involved with it themselves. So that support system is huge when it comes to your own family, those those loved ones that you have uh, that are involved with with the military and and the lifestyle that we live and that we go through the service that we do, because, you know, us as a service member, our families, our, our wives, our spouses, our kids, uh, you know, they go through a, a different style of service as family members being a part mm -hmm. of the service family as well. And so to see us be able to come together through wounded warrior programs, which I'm grateful that each 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 service has a wounded warrior program, but to be able to be a part of that, that connection, that family uh, is really crucial and vital for those of us that become wounded, ill and injured and for our families spe specifically. Excellent for sharing all of that information, Josh. Um, and so, and you mentioned your wife, so you're a husband and a proud father of five kids, um, ages uh, ranging 11 to 19. Um, and so as you've mentioned, AFW2 has been there for your family as well. Um, so can you share any more details about the support that you and your family members have received? Sure. So, you know, like I mentioned from the beginning, when my wife and I sat down with the recovery care coordinator from that moment to this moment, uh, being enrolled in the Air Force's Wounded Warrior Program, uh, my wife, my family, we've all all been blessed by the program. You know, a couple of weeks ago, Chief, when we were on and I had the connection issues, we had AFA with us, um, you know, Christine and, and Carrie, who uh, are our two big advocates at the AFA uh level when it comes to the wounded warrior program and advocating and getting funding uh, for those of us who are retired or separated from the service uh, because there's a different pot of money you know that comes into play whether you're still in service or you're retired and and for them to go out and to help find other nonprofit organizations to help fund us to go to events uh, because these things it costs money to go to these events so afa and has stepped up uh, the wounded warrior project beyond brave the Air Force's uh, Chamber of Commerce or just a few organizations out there, Fisher House, that step in to help fund like myself as a retired disabled veteran, uh, my wife and family to to attend care events, to attend the Warrior Games. Um, so funding is an issue helping us with lodging and airfare. So AFA and other nonprofits that step in to help, help support us uh, financially to get us to these events as as uh, retirees and separate as and disabled vendors is really crucial too because a lot of us um, wouldn't be able to afford to take ourselves and our families to these events if we didn't have some of those nonprofits who are out there and so graciously uh, willing to financially assist us to get to these events and to be still be a part of that Air Force connection and family uh, through the Wounded Warrior Program. Awesome, awesome man. So big shout out to AFA for, for helping out. Like I said it's there's a bunch of good people in the world doing a bunch of great stuff and for you know organizations to kind of link up to, to uh, you know help you help you get to where you want to go is, is awesome um, but I, I see that you 
Well, I've noticed by doing, you know, my little research on you, man, you <laughs> you were pretty physically physically active before your injuries. And uh, adaptive sports really have allowed you, you know, the ability to thrive. And so you're an incredible athlete. I didn't saw you. You know, I've seen some some highlights. I think we'll probably show some during the show, uh, you know, playing playing basketball and, and, and getting pretty hyped, too, man. So I, it's, that's good to see. <laughs> But from team sports and individual sports, it seems like you just do it all. So what do you play in, uh, like, what's your favorite? Uh, so, you know, I've, I've competed in a total of eight actually different adaptive sports. The three team sports, wheelchair basketball, wheelchair rugby, and sitting volleyball. Uh, I've been on those teams uh, for the Air Force Wounded Warrior Team at all three uh, Warrior Games I've been involved with in the past. I've also been a part of the Air or, uh Team US for uh, wheelchair rugby and wheelchair basketball as well. And then individual sports, uh, because of my full bilateral hip replacements, you know, obviously I can't run, I can't do a lot of things with my lower body anymore. So I race in a track chair around the track called, called track chair racing. I do seated shot put and field uh, events, um, discus shot put. Uh, I also do cycling. I ride a recumbent bike and I cycle in um, time trials and road races. And I've also done powerlifting, which uh, when adaptive sports, Warrior Games, Invictus Games level, powerlifting is it's a, it's a bench press. Uh, it's a little bit different than a normal best press. You know, they lay your full body down on a bench. They strap you in. Your legs are up, and you do you do a powerlifting bench press. Uh, and I've also competed in indoor rowing. So those are eight total different sports, uh, and I do seven of them pretty consistently uh, when it comes to the Warrior Game, Invictus Game level. And uh, I just, you know, from that first carry event I went to during my medical board back in 2016, uh, when I went to that camp and just, you know, I talked about everything the program involves, but for somebody who was physically fit, played sports growing up, physically fit on duty until I was injured and, you know, went through some of the lows with not being as physically fit as I was, but being introduced to adaptive sports, what I, I had never heard of until I got enrolled in the program. And then it's like, oh, wow, I can play wheelchair basketball. I mean, I grew up as a basketball player. Um, that, that was huge for me uh, when it came to my healing and recovery and what I went through. And then just the other sports, you know, just because I'm a sports guy, I love to compete. So I just, that first camp I went to, I was there for seven days. I came home. I told my wife and kids, I was like, hey, pulled up online for him. This is the Department of Defense Warrior Games. These are the Invictus Games that Prince Harry created a few years after the Warrior Games were introduced here in the States. I was like, I'm going to play in the Warrior Games for Team Air Force. I'm going to make it on Team US and I'm going to compete in the Invictus Games. These are two goals that I made from my first camp I went to. And I just, I got invited back to a couple more camps. And the next year, 17, I made my first Air Force Warrior team. And I've been in, I've been hooked ever since. Yeah. Man, that's that's awesome, and um, I'm I'm you, you listen to all the sports. And I'm like, man, how's he good at eight different things? I'm not even good at one, so I'm just I'm trying to get my one down. Uh, <laughs> but no, I'm, that's awesome. Excellent, and you you've shared some of this. So you've competed in Warrior Games uh, for the Team Air Force three times, um, and you should have been there this month, but unfortunately, COVID. COVID pandemic has forced the cancellation of that event. So um, what has your experience been like at past games though? Um, it's, it's tough to put in words, honestly, unless you're, you're there and experience it. It's just, it's humbling, honoring. Um, it's incredibly gratifying. It's an emotional experience. It's a, it's unlike any other sporting event or competition that you'll ever compete in as an athlete or be involved with as a, as a spectator. Um, because when you bring wounded warriors together, those who have served in the military and have suffered from their service, uh, protecting and defending, you know, our country or those from other countries who have defended and protected their country. When you come to that warrior games level or Invictus games level and, come together and compete um, by adapting and overcoming those injuries that, that you've suffered through your service. It's, it's incredibly gratifying, um, you know, to get across that finish line or to compete on that court. Um, 
it's it's just so hard to put it into words but all i can say is it's it's absolutely amazing you know my wife and kids you know we talk about the uh, they've been to the warrior games uh, my wife and mother my first time i competed for team usa in australia invictus games they they came out uh, i've had other siblings and their families nieces nephews my parents have been to warrior games in the past so for my my family extended family have experienced it um, I've had a, I had a buddy of mine that lives here in Utah. His name's Lance. Uh, he, he works up, up, uh, near Salt Lake city. And, you know, he, a couple years ago during Invictus games, you know, he, he went to work and actually his big screen at work, he put it on, he kind of introduced people that he worked with fellow coworkers to adaptive sports and what these games are. And, you know, a lot of these people, they've never heard of adaptive sports and they tune in and they're watching the Invictus games from Australia. And they're just like, man, this is like, so cool like this is the awesomest thing is like i'd rather watch a wheelchair basketball game or a wheelchair rugby game than regular basketball or regular football um <laughs> so many people that have never experienced it they come and they're just the camaraderie uh just the absolute uh feeling that you have of being involved as a competitor or spectator at the games and witnessing it is just it's incredible. It's unlike any other sporting event that I've ever been a part of or ever witnessed. It's that's, I don't know, that's kind of my words in a nutshell of how to, how to put it. Yeah. And, and a little birdie here at the AFA conference said that uh, this is the first time or you were part of the team to bring home the gold for the first time for the, the air force team or, or something like that, or the United States team. Uh, for Air Force team, yeah. So back in 2019, you know, we've had two cancellations of games the last two summers. Uh, we were supposed to be in Orlando right now. Unfortunately, we're not. Um, two years ago, we had the games in Tampa Bay, and that was the first time that Team Air Force uh, ever took gold in wheelchair basketball. And so for me uh, and my teammates that, that were on the basketball team, it was amazing to be a part of that. You know, my first year in 2017 at the games, I really didn't know what to expect, honestly, when it came to competing team sports, individual sports. My first games, you just kind of, you're there, you hear stories from your teammates that have been there before and you try to learn from them. Um, we, sitting volleyball and wheelchair basketball, we made it to the, to the bronze medal match in game. And unfortunately, we lost both of those. And so for my first year as a team sport athlete, going home without a medal, when you're playing in the bronze medal match in game, that was that was difficult for me to deal with personally because I want to win. I want I want to come home with hardware, right? I want to represent the Air Force yeah. and show people this is what the Air Force does. And so, our second year in 2018, we had a goal of making it to the gold medal game. We wanted to win gold, obviously, right? Army beat us. Uh, we came home with the silver medal, and then from that that second year, you know, as a team, our goal was next year we're winning gold. Whatever we got to do, whatever we have to do, we're going to step up. We're, we're winning Air Force, our first gold medal in wheelchair basketball. And fortunately enough, we were able to do that back in 2019. And to be a part of the first Air Force team to do that was amazing. Um, that was also the first year they introduced wheelchair rugby to the Warrior Games. They had them at the Invictus game level, but we didn't have them at Warrior Games. And so 2019 Tampa, our rugby team won gold as well. And then sitting volleyball, we ended up with the silver medal. So... Taking gold out of two of the three team sports for Team Air Force was pretty awesome. And then I would say another big highlight for me was, you know, my first Invictus Games in 2018 in Australia. Uh, I was a part of the wheelchair basketball team there and, and we brought home gold, which uh, was a three-peat for Team USA. Uh, and to be a part of my first games, coming home with a gold medal around my neck in wheelchair basketball was absolutely uh, an amazing experience. Um, to be to be able to to win that game and to drape that American flag around your neck and to have that medal placed on your neck by Prince Harry and his wife Meghan Markle uh, congratulating you that was absolutely one of the most amazing experiences of my life yeah man that, that's awesome man. I'm getting goosebumps even listening to you tell the story so um, so you so you also the the US co-captain for the 2022. Invictus Games in the Netherlands. So what are you most looking forward to about that competition this spring? Um, man, it's it's so tough to dwindle, dwindle it down to just one thing or what would be the highlight the best because 
I mean, you know, I'm competing in seven sports, right? So, you know, we got the video up there of me in the track chair from previous games, wheelchair basketball. I'm on the rugby team, the basketball teams again. I'll be competing in track and field, uh, cycling and uh, power lifting. Um, I love competing in all these sports. Obviously, I would say my first love because I grew up a basketball player is wheelchair basketball to go to the Netherlands and, and hopefully win another gold with with Team US with our basketball team and to go back to back for my second time would be, you know, that's obviously a huge goal, something that would be uh, would mean a lot to me. But uh, when you look at beyond the medal and competition side, to see some of the new people that have never experienced uh, being a competitor at the Invictus Games level for Team US, you know, being that mentor, that ambassador, that example to the brand new folks that are on our team who haven't been there before. They'll be there for the first time. I remember what it was like back in 18 is my first time and experience was incredible. It was amazing. I, I want to be able to be that support system for my fellow US teammates, but also representing, you know, our country and the Air Force uh, in a professional manner, uh, you know, showing people what this is what Team US is about. We're here to support these other countries. We're here to support these other wounded warriors and their families. And to be a part of that international wounded warrior, injured family um, and network is something that's it's incredible. I mean, I, I would have never never thought you know when i went through my hip replacement issues and all my injuries that sitting down after hip replacements you know what are we five year plus years later that i would have been involved with the department of defense warrior games three times this would have been my fourth time with uh you know right now at this time if we were in orlando and to be selected as a team co-captain for team us for my second Invict invictus games i would I would have never even imagined or thought this possible. You know, I wouldn't have, would have even dreamt it. So I've had some amazing experiences and opportunities. Um, and I've just tried to do my best to kind of pay it forward. You know, that's something that our, our branch director, Chief uh, Marsha, has taught us, uh, who oversees our Wounded Warrior program at the Air Force level. And she's also our Team U.S. manager. Something that she tries to instill in all of us when we come into the Air Force's Wounded Warrior program is, uh, this family connection, this camaraderie, but when we've been around for a little bit, we need to pay it forward. We need to help these newcomers who come into our Wounded Warrior program. And when we go out and compete at events, you know, she's got a lot of expectation. It's just like when I had the, when we have the uniform on, uh, Chief, you know this. Uh, there's certain standards and expectations for us wearing that uniform and serving our country in the Air Force. The same thing here, you know, I'm representing my my AFW-2 uh, Care Beyond Duty shirt. Uh, this is a uniform as well. It's an Air Force uniform, and I take pride in wearing wearing this uniform uh, very much so uh, that I did wearing my my combat boots and lacing those up every day and putting on that that uniform to go to work in my shop every day for my career field. It's uh, humbling and honoring to wear this uniform now at this uh, stage uh, in a. Uh, my life as as a retired disabled veteran and just the opportunity the i guess the personal um responsibility that i've taken on myself is what marsh has taught us is that we need to go out we need to be mentors ambassadors representing the air force still as professionals uh people with high morals and expectations and standards and and carrying it on and uh, educating and advocating in our local communities on a state level, national level, international level, when we have the opportunity of the importance of taking care of our wounded, ill and injured service members and veterans and their families. Yeah. So, but you being, you being selected as, as a co-captain just is a testament to your leadership already. So not only are you just great an athlete, but uh, <laughs> you're also, they, they also think you, you know, your peers and, and your community think you're an awesome leader as well. So, so that's that's your ninth thing that you're good at. So you just you just keep <laughs> adding to the awesome stuff that you're good at. So, I try, so, but, I try, chief. I try, chief. Try, yeah. I try to do my best to be a good leader and example to these, you know, teammates at the Air Force level, Team USA level. Um, just trying to trying to do the best I can. Obviously, I'm <laughs> you know far from perfect. I'm not the greatest leader or example, but I definitely try try to do my best and, and to take it very seriously. 
Absolutely. So yeah, I just kind of want to kind of tell you a story. Uh, I kind of told you before it went on air, but but I definitely want to tell you on air. So I was uh, yesterday. I, I posted a picture on my Facebook, and uh, a, a good friend of mine, Melissa Weist, she's a she's in a part of the Air Force Wounded Warrior Program. She was like, "Oh, you're here at the National Harbor. Come by the exhibit, uh, so you can say hi." So I went by the exhibit. I, I get probably about five feet from the exhibit. There was a gentleman. I should have got his name behind the behind the counter. He recognized me like right off the bat, and I don't even know. I don't know if he's watched the show before or seen my ugly mug on the on the BX wall or whatever the case may be. Uh, he he was like, "Chief, come here." So he he pulled me behind the booth. He puts me in front of uh, Marsha, right? And you did you mentioned Marsha, uh, yep. and and so I'm talking to Marsha Strotterman, and. She was like, oh, you're interviewing Josh today. And, and I saw that. And, and so she starts giving me the exact same spiel or speech that she, she gave you <laughs> to being like, you need, you know, this is for everybody else. And so I'm sitting there just, I'm not saying a word. I'm just listening to this speech, right? I'm like, well, damn, I want to be a part of it. Like I, she got me all hyped and, and I was like, okay. Like, but she, she was super motivated. Uh, she, she said nothing but great things about you and, and the impact that you've had on the program and the folks that are coming in the program. So, uh, cause I know sometimes it's hard to, to, to even want help or ask for help. And the mm -hmm. fact that maybe that initial, initial kind of, uh, Hey, I don't know if I need to be here. I don't know what, what this is good for. And she was like, you got to get up off the couch and you got to go do this and you got to pay it for it and all the good stuff. So she's definitely trained you well. I can, I can hear Marsha <laughs> coming out of your, your, your conversation. So uh, big shout out to Marsha and, and, and Melissa for, for, you know, taking care of, and all the good folks at the W2 program and AFA. Yeah. So just, just like I said, there's a bunch of great people out there doing some great things for some great human beings. Yeah. Marsha and Melissa are great. I mean, Marsha just her, her entire AFW2 staff, uh, you can't help when you have a when you get introduced to Marsha and get to know Marsha. Uh, there's you can immediately feel her presence, her character, and her demeanor. Oh yeah, and she's she's one of the most uh, selfless serving individuals I've ever met and come across in my entire life. And this she's second to none when it comes to leading the Air Force's Wounded Warrior Program and to leading as team manager for Team US at the Invictus Games level. Uh, there's nobody else that I would want running uh, those two programs because she is absolutely phenomenal. She's somebody who is always going above and beyond. She doesn't get paid for the work and effort that she puts in. There's no way. Um, she is constantly just motivating wounded warriors, training, teaching, molding, mentoring us, and just wanting to inspire us to go out to share our stories uh, if we get involved with the adaptive sports piece of that and we compete for the Air Force team and Team US, you know, that's that's great. Um, she wants us to use the the healing and recovery and the power that comes through sports chief. Uh, as you know, as an as an athlete growing up being active with sports that the power and impact that sports can have uh, goes far beyond the competition line, as you know. Yep. Josh, we want to just pause for a moment and share some viewer feedback with you. Um, but first, sure. just want to say um, thank you for your service and thanks for all that you're doing to continue to serve um, and mentor, you know, newly wounded airmen and and just mentor that community that you're in. So so thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you. Um, David Harper says, this is excellent. Celia is watching from Waldorf, Maryland. Um, Mary Breeding is watching from Texas. John Anderson says he loves the show, so keep up the great work exchange team. Um, and thanks for being a guest on our show, Josh. We, um, we love to have folks on like you who can share their stories and, and maybe inspire others to, to reach out and contact um, the Wounded Warrior Program or, you know, figure out how to get started with that. Maybe they've been hesitant like you were. So, so thanks for sharing your stories with us today. You bet. Awesome. So, uh, Josh, uh, do you have any words of encouragement or advice for the other Wounded Warriors? 
Well, just to kind of piggy out, piggyback off of um, those comments there, you know, the the importance, I guess, for those that may be out there live with us right now or may watch this, you know, in the future. Um, any wounded, ill, injured service member, veteran out there, if, if you're hesitant, if you're in a dark place, no matter what that wound, illness, injury is, whether it's physical, whether it's mental health issues, uh, whether it's combat or non-combat, it doesn't matter. You can be enrolled in uh, your specific services, Air Force or Wounded Warrior Program, and just take that initiative. If you're in that dark place, if you're having a struggling, difficult time, uh, please uh, reach out, find find somebody like myself who's enrolled in a Wounded Warrior Program for our services and go to that first care event, go to that first care camp uh, for your specific service and you're, it'll change your life um, for the better, no doubt. It's going to have a positive, if you have a positive attitude and you get involved with that community, um, it's going to have a positive impact on you and your family and those around you and it's going to change your life. Uh, from now <laughs> and, and, and forever. Um, so please, those that are out there struggling and suffering, um, reach out, reach out to those who are involved with a, a wounded warrior program and, and, and seek the help that, that you need because those, there's those of so many of us out there that are willing to hopefully help inspire and share what we've gone through and that it can have an impact for you as well. And then you can pay that forward to somebody else in the future. Okay, and then I'm going to share this this other comment that came in. Um, I, I'm going to say Callie. Uh, she says, Josh, you are amazing. I work with Josh at an elementary school. He's an amazing and effective mentor for our students as a behavior specialist and coach as well. So outside of uh, mentoring folks in the Wounded Warrior program, he's also mentoring young people as well. So I just want to take a second and share that. Um, but before we say goodbye, Josh, the floor is yours. Anything else that you would like to share with people watching today? Um, well, I, I guess I guess to top it off, I've kind of mentioned and talked about, you know, with our script here, everything that I've wanted to share. I guess in closing, I would just say uh, those of you out there um, who have never witnessed the Warrior Games or the Invictus Games, um, we've got the 2022 Invictus Games coming up in uh, April, April 15th through the 22nd of 2022 are the competition days in the Hague, Netherlands. Uh, these events will be streamed, you know, via YouTube, uh, uh, ESPN and other networks as well. And then that's the same for the Warrior Games. Unfortunately, we were supposed to be in Orlando at this time, having the Department of Defense Warrior Games right now at the ESPN Disney Complex. Due to the pandemic, they they canceled them for the second year in a row. So hopefully next summer we get to have the Warrior Games. So each summer, you know, the Department of Defense puts on the Warrior Games and to the future, uh, please look and watch on social media for when the Warrior Games and Invictus Games dates come out and about. Uh, and please take the time to, if they're near you, uh, take the time to witness them in person. But if not, jump on, jump on and stream these games because like I said earlier, Warrior Games and Invictus Games Adaptive Sports. It's a it's a sporting venue and event that is unlike anything you've ever witnessed or experienced before. And it will, even as just a, a spectator, it'll change and impact your life for the better. Absolutely. And and while you're out there searching for the Invictus and the uh, Air Force Warrior Games uh, on YouTube, look for Chief Chad out there. Cause we, we got Chief Chad and uh, out there on YouTube and Spotify. Uh, just, you know, Chief, if you search Chief Chat uh, on both uh, forums, you should be able to find us. So, but Josh, man, you've been an awesome guest, man. I'm glad we were able to kind of circle back and get you back on the show uh, because, you, like I said, you got an incredible story that uh, I think a lot of people need to hear. And uh, there's a lot of folks out there that, like I said, may not know that they're eligible for some type of wounded war your program or it's just like a, it's so many resources for military members. And I love to, to be able to kind of be a vessel to kind of get that information out. So thank you so much for uh, joining us. Thank you so much to you and your family for all the sacrifices you have, you've done for this country. Uh, we will be reading. Of course, you, you know Chief Chad is going to be rooting for you at the Invictus game. So uh, definitely going to yes. check you out, man. And, and you got all the full support of the folks here at the exchange. We love you. We appreciate you. 
We wish you all the best. Hey, I appreciate that, Chief. Thank you very much. Like I said, it's this. You, know, you guys talk about how honoring it is to have guests come on the show. It's it's humbling, humbling and honoring for me uh, to be a special guest on your Chief Chat show today and to share my story and just to help educate and advocate for for wounded, ill, and injured service members and and veterans all around the world on the international level. This it's always humbling and honor for me to share my story and to to speak. Absolutely, absolutely. So if you don't mind hanging out with us uh, after the live uh, to get some information from you, but like I said, we wish you all the best and we're gonna go ahead and close out the show. So Chief Chat out. <laughs>